Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to the PC desktop, there are some very interesting releases upcoming, perhaps none more so than Zen 5, which of course is going to launch next year in the form of the Ryzen 8000 series and will find its home on the AM5 platform. From all I'm hearing, and you can watch uh, the video that I put out yesterday, the IPC gains are extremely impressive, perhaps actually above what we saw with Zen 2 to Zen 3. In other words, we could possibly be seeing low 20% IPC gains, which is absolutely bonkers. So the obvious question is, what will Intel do? Well, we know that Arrow Lake, of course, will be launched in the form of the 15th generation, and this will sport an 8-16 core configuration. Now, a very interesting thing has occurred over the past 24 hours, and that is that Igor's lab, who has pretty good leaks in general, have managed to obtain some internal presentation and documents from Intel, and they have done a naughty thing, and they have decided to leak them onto the internet. Now, I have done some checking with my source, I do believe this is accurate, but it is worth noting these are projected figures and obviously final production silicon could change in a number of ways, not least of which is clock frequency. I'm not going to read out all of these results and I would encourage you to check out Igor's lab's article because they do go into more detail than what I'm going to do in this video, but I do want to give you some very interesting cliff notes. So let's start out with the obvious one. We can see that these are essentially, um, for lack of a better word, they are basically equalized to ensure that in terms of power consumption, for example, Intel actually using the word normalized, excuse me, um, to the PL1 equal PL2. So we're looking at 253 watts here. Now, there are some details which are not exactly clear in the side of one of those is clock frequency, and we'll get more into that in a moment, I do promise you. However, the headline would be that we're looking at up to 21 percent improvement in cpu performance however when it comes to the gpu there is a significant uptick so we're looking at over two times the performance like of uh, intel's raptor lake refresh and that is what they are comparing against here so it's not the 13900k but it would be the 14900k so it does seem that they are actually showing us the raptor lake refresh versus the um truly next generation parts however the performance differences do really vary across the board obviously it will depend heavily upon the application so you can see that some of these uh, tests here are certainly well below 20 percent now actually in the mid single digits in fact even that's being quite generous whereas on the other hand again the graphics performance is substantially better as for the refresh of um, Raptor Lake well, honestly, there's nothing too much to really report here. We're looking at a couple of percent improvement over the previous generation, which doesn't exactly surprise anyone. Again, if we were to talk about the 13900K versus the 14900K, it's essentially exactly the same thing all over again. No changes in, for example, the cache structure. The only real difference is that we have higher clock frequencies, so over 6 gigahertz, which naturally do translate into higher performance numbers, but it's also not going to be enough because it's not like they're going from like, you know, 5.9 or whatever to like 7 or 8 gigahertz. It's a small increase in, in clock frequency, depending on the number of cores and, you know, other things. So what does all of this mean? Well, there's a couple of things. First of all, um, my own sources had told me that we were looking at up to around a 20% improvement in performance. But I had always said that the problem is when you're talking about these results, is it the average? Is it a specific workload? And so on and so on. So those caveats are always very important because it's like, well, are we talking single thread performance? Are we talking the average across a ton of cores being leveraged? but a load of different applications, or is it the best result for one application? Now, another thing that I am hearing is that the clock frequency here does undergo a regression. Unfortunately, I can't get the actual clock frequency because people are being a little cagey about this because apparently this information is quite new. So obviously people don't want to get spanked by Intel's legal team. Um, so I am hearing there is a clock frequency regression, but obviously a clock frequency regression doesn't exactly say how much it's regressed by. So for example, are we looking at a few hundred megahertz? Are we looking at 500, 600, or a gigahertz? Like it's very difficult to know. It also seems that SMT or hyperthreading has also gone by the wayside as well. One thing as we can also see is that the configuration they're testing against here is eight plus 16, 
uh, plus one. So that's the ultra low power core, of course, which is basically you know not exactly important here. And again, you can see the Zac, the same configuration is leveraged by the Raptor Lake refresh. What isn't certain is whether the eight plus uh, 32 core variant is going to be released. A lot of the early information I'd heard was that it was initially planned, and then I put out a video to state that it probably wasn't going to get launched due to power issues and some other stuff as well that just made it quite difficult. Then a couple of my own sources, as well as one Raichu on Twitter, said that it might be back on. Honestly, don't know. It's quite difficult at this stage to be 100% certain. What I will say is that these results, I probably would say, um, in terms of single thread performance, Zen 5 is going to be ahead. Now, it is worth noting, as I've said like a billion times at this point, that these are not final results. This is not a processor which is going to launch tomorrow. This is a processor which is, of course, going to launch next year. And this year, we're getting the Raptor Lake refresh, which is great. I'm sure everyone's going to be really happy about. It. Actually, I'm being I'm being a bit sarcastic, but the mid range, as I've said a hundred times, looks pretty interesting. But in the high end, anyway, this is not going to interest too many people. I hope that Intel are very competitive on the high end because obviously that provides more competition for us, um, which means you know better pricing. And let's hop, skip, and jump our way onto graphics stuff, shall we? Because there are a couple of very interesting results which have popped up on Twitter, thanks to the Liga account, All The Watts. I will, of course, leave a link in the video description to the account. But basically, they are Time Spy results for the RX 7700 as well as the 7800 respectively. Long story short, we're looking at around 19,000 points for the graphics score and 15,600 for the graphics score of the 7700. Now, if you've been watching the channel for any length of time, you'll know that I have said that I heard that the full fledged N32 silicon would indeed be around the 19,000 result. I actually said that I'm going to round up or down. I'm not going to say which way. And this is, of course, what we're seeing here. As for the release date for these GPUs and the pricing, I've been told basically for quite some time it's going to be Q3, Q4. Um, that's what I said in the video where I talked about the performance numbers, and it seems that this is still the case. It's probably going to be about September time. I don't have an exact release date just around then. Uh, the price has not really changed either. This is for the highest end SKU, so we're looking at around the same price as the 4070. The best way I can describe the highest end SKU, the 7800, is the 4070, but with worse ray tracing performance, and I'm hearing the power consumption is not ideal um i have back in that video said that it was around 250 watts i think uh 250 275 but they are allegedly trying to improve that so it might be a little better on final production slash drivers but what basically we're looking at here is a gpu which is going to be really alive or dead based upon the pricing so i am hoping that amd does lower the price more than what you know my initial rumor was i have heard that the configuration for n32 and this is something that i've meant to say several times in videos but honestly i just i know it's just one of those things i didn't but what i have basically heard is the highest end SKU is 60 compute units i think just about everyone knows that the highest end SKU is 60 compute units i'm pretty sure you could get into a, a time machine go all the way back to the dinosaurs if you had a translation device and ask them how many compute units uh, the highest end n32 SKU had and they'd probably tell you 60 but i've heard the next one down is 54 and then it goes down to 40 so there is essentially a cut for the GPU because initially it was going to be 48 but now I've heard it goes down to 40 for some reason or another so again this is going to be made or broken by uh, as I've said multiple times now the pricing this is one of those parts where it would have been obviously great if it launched earlier I think at this stage Nvidia have essentially filled out their GPU lineup i mean obviously there are a couple of obvious things that we're waiting on like you know either the 4090 ti or titan i've heard it's going to be the titan that launches but it's it's nvidia so they just kind of do what they want but there are a couple of great cards in the rtx 40 lineup my personal opinion like if you've got the cash the 4090 is really impressive it's just bloody expensive there are a couple of obvious other decent-ish ones like you can maybe make the argument the 4060 is okay 
Um, I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are on the 40 series lineup. I mean, the 4060 is okay in some ways, but then it's also not a big jump over the 3060. The 4060 Ti, in my opinion, is worse of the two. The 47, it, it's kind of a weird lineup, honestly. But yeah, it's going to be very interesting also whether NVIDIA decides to knock the price down. There have been some price cuts here or there. Of course, even the... Um, the 7900 and the, the 7900 XTX are not him hitting the MSRP at the moment. The GPU market is just all kinds of weird. And I, I would also probably say the used market is a bit odd as well. Because, yeah, I think a lot of people are kind of making decisions of whether they hold on to the older cards. What this basically means with the 7800, though, just to round up, is that we are essentially looking at a GPU which is a little bit faster than you know the higher end n21s so basically it's going to be you know 6800 xt kind of level give or take of course it's going to depend heavily on the application with that said guys hopefully you have enjoyed my waffling if you did you know what to do leave a like on the video and all that stuff and i'll see you soon take care of yourselves bye for now